So, Avard, how long have you been a prick? <laughs> <laughs> so Good now he left. Oh, he's gone. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Number 1 Crude Mistakes with myself Glenn from Number 1 Projects and Havard from Behind the Mistakes and KJ, the Swedish guy who literally gets his balls out for a few extra subscribers on YouTube. How are you doing, guys? (laughs) (laughs) Great, great. (laughs) And you? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm all good. So KJ, getting your balls out. Yeah, yeah, it felt uh, appropriate. since it was more or less a uh, uh, Dyson Every Film uh, tribute, uh, so I had to switch up the the naughty parts. I did I didn't finger enough holes, I think, to to live up to his standards. <laughs> but yeah, he he likes to do to do it to do uh, to hint at things, oh, okay. so to speak. <laughs> and he also has that uh, his Deadpool shop assistant. Um, oh, is that uh, where the opening scene comes from then? Yeah, yeah. He he usually opens his videos with with Deadpool doing something really stupid in his workshop, and he chasing him off and something like that. Okay, so, I thought that yeah. was really clever how you put that together, and then yeah. he it collapses. Was it a stuffed pair of trousers that it's sort of just scanning past? Well, I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the failed. Uh... Coloring experiments. It's the one who just uh, <laughs> got the mixture wrong. <laughs> so you're pleased with it, KJ? You got some good good views and a couple of extra subscribers out of that one. Yeah, it it turned out pretty well. I mean, pretty as close to what I imagined as I could be bothered to actually execute. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, I, I've had the idea for this do, doing something with this gas canisters for like a year or something like that so i've had them laying around in the workshop basically all that time and every time i've seen one out in the wild i've taken a photograph of them just to (laughs) more or less to remind (laughs) myself to actually get a move on and do something about it that was one of the trickiest bits actually about watching the uh the video was keeping an eye up in the corner of the screen to see little shots that you take and yeah i mean i i i I didn't want to have the video drag on for too long, just filling in stuff that maybe a lot, some people weren't interested in, interested in. And then I thought that might get some repeat views if people have to <laughs> stop and go back and, <laughs> and watch it again if they actually want to see all of it. Very clever. Did you ask anybody who commented if, you, if they'd uh, seen your sticker? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not... Uh, <laughs> Not going, I'm not going that route. I'm not falling <laughs> that low. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was fun, and and uh, it was, it was great for smashing stuff as well. So I thought that that turned out great as well. Yeah, you got some great slow mo on there. I, I wouldn't say great, but it was good enough at least. I in my second ever video, I tried to get some slow mo of um, some apples being shot. And I managed to slow it down, but I didn't do it as well as you did. Yeah, well, the the, the slow mo function on the the Google Pixel camera is is pretty decent, actually. So. Uh, okay, I didn't have that function on my camera at the time. I um, I just slowed it down in edit. Yeah, that that usually gets shoppier, and you you need good lighting to have to make uh, slow mo work well as well. So yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. It was. I mean, it's it's really nice to get out a video that you've been planning more or less for a year, <laughs> actually be done with it and be able to move on with something else. So I've already started editing the next video and started the the Christmas tree stand build as well. So wow, sir! I've so what's the that. next? What's the next video? Uh, it's going to be a, 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 a well a, a short thing from Skapet Festivalen, just stitching together. Some parts to actually show all your poor sods that weren't able to come. <laughs> I was just laughing because you just gave another reveal. That's the second time you've done it. Yeah, but th- that's nothing <laughs> to hide. I thought as well. It's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing to hide. <laughs> I, I I only 
I'm I only uh, hide the things that that one I want to be a surprise or two I'm not sure that I will able to be able to pull off uh, because Fair I don't enough. want uh, I don't if I've thrown something out there that I can't really deliver on then I feel like a failure but if I only know about it myself then I'm only a failure <laughs> to myself and that's fine <laughs> Sorry, I was just just wondering whether Havard was going to actually speak then for a second. Yeah, I was uh, just as it happened. I thought, what if this becomes an awkward silence after this, and like just like nobody said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally had something lined up, but I just thought I'd pause just to see if you wanted to talk. <laughs> uh, well, I actually have two things to follow up your video on, and the first thing is, you said you waited a year. Uh, but when I saw it, my first reaction was, he really liked to smash things. Because I, I started remembering some other videos, and uh, it seems to be <laughs> not a permanent theme, but uh, it's something you're revisiting every now and then. And then I was just going to ask you, is everything okay? <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? I mean, it's the, the winter depression is coming down hard on some of us, so... I thought I'd just check up on you. Yeah, well, it's it's good to have an outlet, I think. But if you build something that's able to smash, the only way to test it is to smash stuff. I mean, that's if you watch a knife maker, they, they end the video with chopping up some veg vegetables or something like that, or cutting a rope or something. And if you build something big and heavy, then you smash stuff. I mean, just look at Dyson Every Films videos or Michael Cthulhu, which are the two greatest smashers on youtube i think yeah. this, if you build something big and burly use it uh, whatever you've built you have to use it if you build a nice chair sit in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's um i also have a project coming up that's been a year in the making and that's because i bought the mold for it uh, a year ago and it's uh, another gingerbread house Oh. I, I, I bought a, a mold for it on sale after Christmas last year with uh, mm. explicit plans of making a video this year. So when I saw you smashing things, I started thinking, well, it's getting closer. So I <laughs> started planning on what I wanted to look like and how I could shoot it. And then you have a deadline as well, because if you overshoot this year, then you have to wait another year, more or less. Yeah. But then it's it's... If it's not a Christmas movie, it could be a New Year's movie. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's true. I'll ha I'll have a backup. And Chinese New Year, when is that? Who knows? I mean, that's uh, I, just for except for... the Chinese, which is basically <laughs> everyone, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, that's uh... a big market to try to get into as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but look I'm, at Hollywood. I'm not sure, you just uh, try to, how... to cram in something Chinese to get into that market. Yeah, because that was the follow-up. How does gingerbread houses fall into Chinese New Year's? Because I haven't seen that connection before. But then again, someone has to be first. And they are known to play around with fireworks. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's not a far stretch in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got somewhere safe to light it? Are you just going to do it at home? that's the thing um if i'm not gonna light it at home i need to drive for a while and then of course i, I would like the scenery to be matching and then of course there's always the issue of if i film it like i've done previously uh during the night and once you light it up and it uh, burns at a uh, thousand plus degrees and it's so bright that it throws off the camera so everything is just bright for two seconds and then it's dark again and the the camera can't really adjust before it's all over. So I was kind of thinking if I should do a day a daytime shoot. It doesn't need to be in the nighttime. There is still a lot of flames and smoke and so on. But of course, the dream scenario would be that the the small leaves of snow are just slowly coming down, yeah. and you have that really snowy backdrop and so on. But I remember one of the videos I filmed. It was pouring rain, and it was like. Uh, total miserable experience <laughs> but then again once you've built it you, you don't want to store it at home because it is a fire hazard and yeah. of course a gingerbread house 
with kids around it's like they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna find it and they're gonna play with it and then of course live candles and so on so no yeah are you just gonna do it as straight up um straight up fuel or are you gonna add any metals to it to get different colored smokes and different effects i was looking into getting some uh oxidized metal or something to uh, try to see if i can get some color variations i also know that if you add some iron filings in the mix you do it will even accelerate the uh, the burn rate so i might look into that but we'll see should i add a I mean, little Christmas crackle to is it so far away <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about going out on a frozen lake and do it there? Yeah, I mean that. Then there's no problem if someone sees it because I mean, a great big fire on a lake. That's not something to call the fire department about. <laughs> no, that's true. That's actually a good idea. And then, yeah, we and have you have a, the chance a for a good scenery as well. Lakes. Sorry, it's a nice chance for a good scenery. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, but usually the lake around here they don't freeze over until january february it's ah, just, yeah, it's true. seldom so long cold periods before christmas <laughs> it could be a really interesting video <laughs> with you trying to walk out on like two centimeters of ice <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could make a gingerbread boat then <laughs> it's it, exactly it where my head was going <laughs> yeah i mean there's a lot of possibilities you can Basically, you use any mold, so it don't has to be a Christmas theme. But I mean, it has been a Christmas tradition for many years. So it's why don't you find a nice dry barn full of straw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I do have some friends with the barn, but probably get some extra publicity. Are they, are they good? Are they good friends? <laughs> well, up until the video, I guess. <laughs> but afterwards, might not. Friends, be. you want to keep is the yeah. question. Uh, that's the that's the thing. <laughs> so how's your week win? <laughs> uh oh this has been a well last week this week it's been it's been piling up work wise. So today I really look forward to um to actually do the recording because my brain is fried. Maybe that explains all the awkward silences. Um we have had like a whole day kickoff meeting today because we actually got a contract and uh, all the clients representatives arrived today and a lot of the people that's going to be working on the project on our side was also attending so it was a full day of a lot of information uh, mm. which everybody then <laughs> needs to digest before we start kicking off and usually it's okay but in this setting we're going to work close with the client uh, so close that they're actually gonna reside in our offices three days a week that means that i have three days where i have to follow them up really close which then only leaves mondays and fridays to do everything else i need done so it's a uh, it's gonna be a hectic year i guess i don't think so you ever like... told our listeners what you actually do for a living Havard. no I guess I haven't. <laughs> um, I work in the concepts and studies division uh, of a large engineering firm. The company is traditionally coming from oil and gas, but we are venturing into wind power. So it's a, it's a new business and it, it's new for me. I have never worked in a field where you're trying to establish a new business. I come from the maritime industry, which is an, in Norway an old and tradition based industry where all the rules and regulations and the way of doing things have been set for years which is kind of comforting uh, but now you're venturing into a new market uh, and uh, it's a lot of ifs and buts it's gonna be a hectic year that's for sure did you get any time in the workshop uh, it's been very little this week actually um but i have a new video lining up <laughs> which is one that just sailed in from the side so this is not one of the original ones um, and i've actually done something i don't do very often but i have actually written the script in advance so i have the script ready so i know uh, everything i want to say and 
I felt it's important to write the script here because it, it needs to be on point and punchy and short. The problem is that means that I can't just do what I have usually do. I just build and talk over it and just redo it every time. So now I have to memorize all that text. And when I now have started proofreading it and just tweaking it to get it ever so slightly better, I just realized that I don't want to remember all this text so that I can do it in one shot. So now I'm looking to breaking it up so I can just remember one sentence and then I can move the tripod and then film from another angle. And then I maybe should incorporate various of the projects I've done before. So um, I'm starting to build a, like a set in my mind. So hopefully during this week, maybe closer to the weekend, I can get some filming done. But uh, it doesn't actually involve any building which is kind of boring because <laughs> i also have some projects i need to get done so uh, yeah i'm just piling on stuff but, uh, are you doing I an thought... unboxing from timu or something like that <laughs> no <laughs> but i have been thinking about that as well i've seen a lot of unboxing videos and i i seldom watch them to the end it, it just it needs to be something specific that i'm interested in but i see that is a uh, a way for some to get a lot of views yeah. in certain niches and so on. And I think it's, it feels like that's an easy video, isn't it? So if I'm out of ideas, I can just order uh, various random shit from China and then just <laughs> open boxes while I'm talking about it and then upload the video without almost doing any editing. So yeah. I yeah. skipped a lot of uh, buying shit from China videos the last couple of weeks, I feel because they're mostly everywhere and it doesn't seem like they have anything new to, to add. He might have done it before, I'm not sure, but I saw the Swedish maker did one just recently. Yeah, he's done um, a couple. I actually watched that one because he's uh, he makes good videos and it's uh, pleasant to watch. He actually put a bit of rudeness in this one as well, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> made me laugh, made my wife blush. <laughs> <laughs> I love that message that you uh, screenshot and sent us from your wife. <laughs> uh, I, I was sitting in the meeting today and the messages were ticking in on my phone and we had like, uh, I had like half a minute uh, slot where I could just read my messages and I read that one and I really struggled not laughing out loud in the room full of people. <laughs> well, you, you'd better tell the listeners what that message is now. <laughs> Uh, do I dare? Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the message just say, to be absolutely clear, I have never taken any sort of side glance at your brother. <laughs> With a lot of exclamation marks. Yeah. <laughs> Too many. To... <laughs> it draws a sus suspicion, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if it's just like, ha ha, very funny, then of course you wouldn't think more about it. But yeah, this smells kind of fishy. <laughs> yeah, my w wife uh, laughed out loud as well, <laughs> listening to, to that. So, yeah. Oh, just while we're having a pause, I'm just going to move these metal rulers away from my knee. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have metal rulers at your knees? That's where they, that's where they hang on my workbench. <laughs> Are you part cyborg? What, what are you sitting there and measuring while yeah. recording your <laughs> podcast? It's, a, it's an experiment on the different <laughs> temperatures in the workshop. <laughs> yeah, I saw it looked like it had millimeters. That was a... Yeah, it's down, to six, it's down to 600 millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> so how's your week been, Glenn? Um, well, since we last recorded last tuesday um i did a little bit more work in the toilet <laughs> got that did get that first coat of paint on for um uh... can't you say that you did the bathroom instead <laughs> my wife was in the toilet sounds like <laughs> <laughs> my wife keeps saying you need to explain that you're building you know a water closet a wc or a bathroom and just stop saying toilet because you're not actually making the toilet itself <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good question because, I mean, we all use VC, but water closet? I mean, if you translate it to Norwegian, it sounds weird. I mean, it's not a closet. <laughs> Why do you want water in your closet? 
You have clothes in your closet, and if you bring water into that, everything is soggy and wet. And you yeah, wasn't it more or less like that? The first ones they build <laughs> in the back in the olden days. Well, I think. Yeah. You can't tell me that sounds weird in Norwegian because last week you said you were going to catch the Erdy Gurdy to Trondheim as Northern Lights. Hurtigruten. I know I do a lot of giggling in the thing, but I giggled at that point too. I'm like, what did he just say? Does Hurtig uh, just mean fast in Norwegian or does it mean? Joyful as well. Oh, it just means fast. So because in, in Swedish, it's mostly joyful. In se- secondary, uh, it's fast. That word means. So when I hear it, it, it sounds there's like nothing joyful about the. It, 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 no, so. I know because, because in, in Swedish, <laughs> it sounds like it's it's the fun and happy woo part where you go. But no, it's the slowest damn boat you can ever think of. And if you lo- like looking at fjords and mountains, it's great. Uh, yeah. But still, there are better ways of watching fjords and mountains. Than, uh, <laughs> well, I might be biased, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you've had uh, your fair share and the rest of the world, more or less, hasn't had any share at all. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a realization we did. Me and a, a friend, we went to uh, Australia one year and then... Uh, we were doing a road trip of up the west coast, and then we saw like this, um, uh, what's it called, uh, the sightseeing sound signs, uh, saying that uh, there's a waterfall to the left. And then we had the, like the travel guide with us, so we just checked it. All right, it says actually the the largest waterfall in Australia. That got to be something worth seeing. So we turned off, and <laughs> we spent hours uh, driving a, a crappy camper van on crappy roads into what felt an eternity of jungle. And then we arrived at the waterfall. <laughs> just went over and, is this it? <laughs> I, mean, I, don't know, I think uh, I think we have 10 waterfalls at that size, uh, just around where I live. Uh, and we don't think much about them. So we just, all right, let's make a mental note. Outside of Norway, if someone is bragging about a waterfall, well, it might not be all that <laughs> much. I think you need mountains to actually have waterfalls, and Australia isn't really known for mountains, is there? Well, they have they have a rock, <laughs> <laughs> a rock, <laughs> and uh, they they do have mountains, but uh, still, it's not. Uh, isn't it mostly desert? Yeah, and some. Well, or is that they call it Mad mountains. Max you have the, the blue mountains and so on, but it's. Some pebbles stacked on top of each other, basically. Um, I mean, uh, a, a geologist might kill me for saying that, but it looks like it to me. <laughs> You'd be so excited if you came to uh, Lincolnshire, the flattest county in, in England, I think it is. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah, that being said, I, I've actually lived in Denmark, so we, we're used to, uh, I'm, I'm not used to flat. Uh, I wouldn't say that still. But you have lived it. (laughs) A need. It's weird. Of course, you don't think about it when you're living it. But if you don't have the mountains and the fjord as a reference point, it really throws off your entire world, basically. So when I go to holiday somewhere or visiting friends like in Denmark, if if it's flat and you don't have any reference point and you're away from the sea, it feels almost disorientating. Yeah. To see a, a horizon, it's weird. There's supposed to be mountains and, and trees and stuff in the way. Yeah, so, so you see this uh, American movies where they always uh, show people getting lost in like the suburban neighborhoods and so on because everything looks the same and don't have a reference point. And I feel that about most of the world. If they don't have mountains and a fjord, then it feels like just driving around in a big suburbia and I'm completely lost. <laughs> and that's most of the world, I think, <laughs> outside yeah. Norway. <laughs> yeah. We, we just navigate by pubs. <laughs> yeah. That figures. Which must be really confusing in Ireland because every other house is a pub. <laughs> There's a lot of data points. Yeah. 
But then again, if you didn't have all those pubs, the churches would be stacked up wall to wall. So I mean, it's good for something, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, we're on the subject of Ireland. You've got a uh, a mention this week on uh, two thirds by the Irish fella, KJ. Yeah, yeah, Kev Shark, yeah. Yeah. The team captain of uh, Team Shark Attack, the Movember team, uh, I'm on, amongst others. <laughs> yeah. I think we, we interrupted you last week while you were telling us about that. No, you just didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, just, fair. That, that's just every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just waiting for your turn to speak instead. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone no, quiet, I, I, it's my turn. <laughs> No, I figure that uh, you you really forget that some things need explaining because this is like my fourth year doing Movember, so it's I know everything about it, but other people don't. Perhaps that is uh, trying to raise awareness uh, for uh, uh, for cancer and uh, and uh, mental health. Uh, so uh, that's why people grow mustaches. And uh, we in uh, Team Shark Attack uh, try to do it a little differently that we grow our beards two month, months in advance. So we have something to, to work with and then shave one silly mustache every week for the entirety of <laughs> November to to make fools of ourselves. I'd quite like to join in on the, the Team Shark Shark, shark attack that's not easy to say um next year so it'd be it'd be good if you guys could do a little bit of something before it all starts yeah yeah sure yeah. there's always space uh, i say that's up to kev but yeah he hasn't <laughs> turned anyone down so far <laughs> so listening to him on the two-thirds focus um yesterday i think it was he was saying so it's more about you know just starting conversations with other chaps and you know asking leading questions on, on are you actually all right and all of that um on those points and uh, not so much about the um donations but there is a way of donating money as well isn't there so where, where do we find that kj yeah there's uh there will be uh since we've talked about it there will be a link in uh, in this uh, in the description of the podcast but there's always oh, oh there's also uh, a link on my instagram page and if you see me around Facebook or LinkedIn or something like that, uh, there's also some links. Uh, but then there's, all, of course, the big Movember and web page. Uh, I think they have uh, specific ones for for specific countries as well. So me being part of Team Shark Attack, I'm actually pretending that I'm Irish. Uh, <laughs> because I, I I wasn't able to to join the team otherwise, uh, <laughs> but that actually gave me an idea. You talked about LinkedIn. I think it's uh, Hank Green is a YouTuber that just decided. Well, there is not not enough YouTubers on uh, LinkedIn. It's a bit uh, dullish and uh, corporate minded. So he thought, uh, well, my goal is to be the biggest YouTuber on LinkedIn because uh, that's a low hanging fruit <laughs> kind of guess. <laughs> and then I realized I haven't seen much podcasts on LinkedIn either. So maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a niche. <laughs> Talking of uh, getting in, going down different routes and exploring different ways of uh, selling yourself a VOD, somebody's got a shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's uh, it's up and running now. Um, I was uh, looking into all the options you have on your YouTube account, and one of the things I haven't explored basically was um, the shop function. When I clicked on it, I saw you could very easily integrate if you have like a Shopify account or a Spreadshop account. And then I just realized Spreadshop, that sounds kind of familiar because <laughs> when I've been ordering t-shirts, I've been ordering that from Spreadshirt, which is actually just a derivative of the same company. And I already have an account there, but I haven't set up actually selling anything, but I already had my logos and so on uploaded there because I made myself a Hellcorder t-shirt. 
So it was just a few clicks away to setting that up. So now you can actually buy a Behind the Mistakes a t-shirt uh, and a Hellcorder t-shirt, stickers, cups, and whatever. And this is, it's a web shop that basically sells and print on demand on various items. So you basically just have to upload a couple of logos and you can just decide which kind of items people will be allowed to buy with your logo on it. So you just choose what kind of t-shirts, what kind of accessories and so on. And then you just press play. So now of course you can buy t-shirts, but that being said, it's not my shop uh, in that sense that I uh, like own everything. So of course it's print on demand. So a t-shirt costs 25 pounds. I might see two of those pounds the rest goes to the company and their printing and so on so it's uh it's not a lucrative business <laughs> but completely hassle-free for you isn't it yeah yeah, yeah that's worth a, a lot i think yeah yeah that's true so what was the wildest product you could uh they had that you could put your logo on so anything you saw and thought it'd be really funny to put my logo on that but it's inappropriate or no but i saw that they now have also included <laughs> pillows <laughs> But of course, just putting a logo on that wouldn't be anywhere inappropriate. But I could think of other things to put on it. But uh, <laughs> hmm. a but they had pillow. like a, they had like an apron or so on. So okay, should I just put my logo on that and just send it to I did a thing and <laughs> he's always wearing. But it's it's not a leather apron though. So oh, it looks really uh, it looks curated and and thought through at least. Yeah, the only thing I'm missing is you could also upload uh, your banner from your YouTube page uh, and just mirror that so you can actually make the the visual feel of the entire shop to match more uh, your YouTube account. But I haven't put that much effort into it. And I've also been thinking that I should do something about the graphics on my YouTube page as well. So that's a, yeah. that's a project for later when... The, the evenings are getting darker and all the all the drawing work I can do while the kids are also drawing so that we can make a family thing out of it. I can draw my stuff and they can drew, draw their stuff, but we can sit at the same table and mm. make a oh, thing out of a it. That's a good so. one. Do the kids not want to color your stuff in when you draw, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have been drawing things and then I just walked away from it because I was just going to do something and then someone has written their name all over it with a heart. But, I mean, it's adorable. So, And it's my fault. If it's something I, I want to keep, I need to put it high up. But they, they are growing up to become two monkeys. So, I mean, they are now pushing chairs around, uh, jumping, climbing, everything. So no place is safe unless you lock the door. But <laughs> It doesn't really change as they get older. They just get taller. <laughs> yeah and smarter which yeah. is a good thing but of course it uh, makes your <laughs> day a bit harder <laughs> so guys what do you think to my uh, new mug yeah i just saw yeah really like it now yeah. actually i didn't i'm going off brand today yeah me too <laughs> no. i feel so, uh... The only time I've got a moon, a theme. <laughs> the only time I've got a moomin mug, and you t- you two don't bother. <laughs> yeah, we can fix have it I, in edit. <laughs> have, yeah. have I made it uncool? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got it. It's like, uh, yeah. but I was thinking the um, the mug is a nice touch, but you also shared uh, the candy that you got. Smash! Tell us Are about you- that. That smash should be called smack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, that's that stuff's delicious. That's like crack cocaine. I mean, yeah. uh, once you've had one, you, you <laughs> and they actually advertise it like that. Uh, you can't only have one, and uh, it's, w- once you open that bag, it's gone. <laughs> so is that in uh, is that in Sweden as well, smash, or is it just a Norwegian thing? Yeah, we we got it. It it comes from Norway, but I mean it's the same company in both places. I was wondering when did that appear in Norway? What year approximately? It's like five years ago, ten. No, I I, I can remember it as a kid as well. So it's it's all okay. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think they tried to launch it in Sweden like fifteen, twenty years ago or something like that, and and it it fell flat. But 
like five, ten years ago, it came again, and and now it's it's stuck here as well. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a bit like cocaine, I guess. Uh, in the <laughs> 80s, it was popular in small groups and within finance and so on, but now everybody's using it. So. <laughs> it takes a bit of time before it yeah. finds its market. Even the English guys got some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a really fun oh. day. I got home got home from work and there was a, a big box outside, the, uh, outside my workshop here, just left outside, another box at the side of that, and then another box and a few other bits and bobs. I thought, crikey, is it Christmas? <laughs> it looked like it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you posted the picture and I instantly knew because uh, Marco actually approached me and told me his plans and asked me if I felt comfortable sharing your address since you knew that I had it. And Yeah, yeah of yeah, course, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> of course, send him stuff. Uh, no, he said he had got a lot of help on questions and so on, so he wanted to send a appreciation your way. So I said, well, that's uh, doable. Yeah, that was really nice. It was very much appreciated. It did make my day. But I was going to try and pull both of your legs and say it was an appreciation for doing a good job on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, but what what did you get? You got uh, you got the cracked chocolate. You got the mug. <laughs> you got a beer. Um, was it? Yeah, wheat beer. The Mimi mug. Um, a tin of mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Which is great because I actually I'm one of the few English fellas I know that actually eats mackerel out of a tin all the time. So, mm. and Norwegian stuff is better, obviously. And obviously. Uh, Big big bar of chocolate and some stickers. So it was yeah, it was really cool. Really, really yeah. nice. It's nice yeah, to get that's... one of those care packages. Yeah, definitely. I also on the same day got your stickers, KJ, that you sent me. Yeah. That looked like they'd been ravaged. The stickers were fine, but the the envelope was just the front of the envelope. The back was completely missing. It arrived in a clear plastic bag. Okay. So uh, with, a, with an apology from the post office. <laughs> <laughs> Did the oh, postman nice. eat the, the chocolate I put in? <laughs> there was no chocolate. Okay, that's that's too bad. Because uh, I uh, these kind of candies I put in. <laughs> just, for, All... <laughs> just for the listeners, the little chocolate bar that KJ's holding up says plop on it. Yeah. English speakers always like this candy. <laughs> That's probably why the envelope had got torn to shreds. <laughs> the squirrel yeah. probably got it. Yeah. yeah. The postman had a dog or something which now has <laughs> diarrhea for a week yeah. probably. <laughs> might be, might be. So what what does plop uh, translate to in Swedish then? It's nothing. It's I mean <laughs> more or less it's the the sound yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nothing more than that. It's just uh, chocolate with the caramel filling. Nice. Um, <laughs> I presume it's nice. I just have to take your word yeah, for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I'll bring some to make a central. Excellent. And you can bring some smack. I mean, smash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's already on the list. <laughs> I think all cut. Norwegians are bringing. <laughs> and I'll I'll yeah, bring a print of old speckled hen. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh. I mean, the color matches my logo, and I do think that you can buy them in uh, smaller bags. So maybe I should make some uh, care packages I can just hand out, in just like a way to sweeten the deal. Like uh, with a kazoo. Here's a sticker and some candy to get you hooked. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a positive should... reinforcement thing. <laughs> yeah. I was also looking into uh, getting these. Um, you get this uh, vacuum seal uh, machines, kind of cheap, but you can also not use the vacuum function, but you can use it to seal plastic bags. So maybe I can open them, put the stickers inside and put like, like and subscribe and then just close them up and just <laughs> hand out candy. <laughs> <laughs> like a golden ticket. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if I bring a big enough suitcase, I can get. 104 of them in there or 106 now is what I need to get the subscribers count back up 
<laughs> I was just about to ask, how did you calculate how many, bo- how many bags of chocolate could fit in the suitcase? <laughs> he knows oh. what eight kilos is divided by. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I woke up today and, ooh, it's one up. And then by lunchtime, it's, ooh, it's <laughs> back down again. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, I know, it's, but it's interesting to see when you you have the statistics saying this is the the top five videos for the last twenty eight days. But if you expand that window, you see all the videos that someone has clicked on, and if you get far enough down, some of the videos might have gotten one view. But if you have a lot of videos on that list, when you expand it and you see. 10 or 15 of the lower videos just have one view then you know there's one person who stumbled onto one of the videos and then he just watched another one and he watched another one and that very often correlates to one up in the subscriber account so Mm. it's kind of nice to just open up that list and okay at least there's one guy there or gal who (laughs) thinks that this was a fun afternoon watching all those videos because if you sum them up that's a couple of hours of (laughs) watching time (laughs) Unless you just click, nope, 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 <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's also an option, I guess. So I know I've been giving you um, subscriber updates between you and Mellow Labs all week. <laughs> have, you, yeah. have, have you checked it this evening? No, I think we need a live check yeah, right the, now. Okay, I know, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Never do it to be nice, I guess. So. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah. What's the What's the score? I only get three point eighty nine. I don't know how to see the full number. That's nice. That's... Uh, the Mellow Labs. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> neck and neck. He's small, isn't he? Mm. No, he's he's three point eight nine two. I thought he was. So uh, I thought he was. You, so you get one more digit. Hmm, that's weird. Maybe if you watch both of you from the outside, it might look similar. Yeah. Some rounding errors, perhaps. So it's neck, neck and neck, then, is it? Yeah. The race is on. What are you going to do? Have but I... then, if you divide that on videos, he's way ahead because, well, I have more videos than he. So. Oh. No, but I like, uh, I'm supportive of the kids, like uh, <laughs> moving up and forward in this world. And I like to think that I have played my role in lift, lifting them up the next step, which is well, nice. Maybe after yeah. next week, we can uh, ride his coattails a little and elevate Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. That, that's always the plan. You have to be nice on the people coming up in the world because uh, they are the one that will remember you when you get old and need a hand in anything <laughs> <laughs> and and i don't think that we should uh, divide by number of videos because i have the f- fewest subscribers of us of us, us three and i have more videos than the two of you combined <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so please don't <laughs> you got a few extra subscribers this week though kj that's good yeah a handful i think yeah so that's nice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call three a handful, but <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends on what you're, what you're counting from. Uh, okay. Because I was. Uh, if you're a Disney character. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, but I, I mean, I was going up and down around uh, three hundred fourteen yeah. yeah. for a long time. Now it's actually jumped up to three hundred nineteen. So that's. No, that's good. So that's yeah. Talking numbers, yay! That's really funny for the audience <laughs> who doesn't. <laughs> the wives who doesn't really care about the YouTube yeah, stuff. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> most of our listeners, so I, <laughs> I feel, has uh, some kind of subscriber count in one channel or several, so it's relatable, I guess. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so anyway. Got a coat of paint on the toilet this week. <laughs> <laughs> on the actual toilet? On... <laughs> how, st- how do you how do you prep, we uh, how do you prep the surface on the porcelain for painting? I know you, you get paint yeah. for uh, tiles and so on. So well, you, you, you have to plaster it first. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. We, we actually have... Uh, okay, I'm not going to... Sorry. <laughs> uh, co- co- complete the story before I totally ruin it. <laughs> it's, it's all right. You carry on. You carry on, mate. No, I mean, we, when we bought this house, uh, they they bragged about that. They uh, refurbished the uh, the bathroom in 2001, but I'm guessing they bought some tiles from the 80s, which is like a <laughs> sa- salmon colored uh, yellow or something. Uh, it's totally horrible, but they probably got them cheap and then they got a friend of the family to do the the labor. So, I mean, it, it works and everything, but it doesn't look like it's from 2001 and that is also 20 years ago today. So, <laughs> but it's horrible. So I've been looking into this. Of course, we don't want to redo that bathroom just yet uh, but i have seen you get this uh special kind of paint for tiles oh yeah, uh, yeah. so we were thinking about should you just go for a, a gray and just tone everything down a bit and buy some cheap cheap by ikea furniture to put in there but yeah still you need to do some preparation and that smell sanding to me and then (laughs) i don't want to do that and i just put a bathtub in last year and that's that's a fit down to the millimeter so getting that out again i don't want to get that out before we're redoing the bathroom (laughs) (laughs) so of course then not getting access to all the walls doing all the the paint and preparation needed it's uh it's a failure just waiting to happen, so I'm guessing we we'll just leave it. But uh... I've only ever seen uh, one bathroom with repainted tiles, and it looked fucking awful. Yeah, it looked like um, it had been painted with dull nail varnish, and you could see yeah. you could see the brush strokes in the paint. <laughs> it looked bloody awful. And that's the thing. I was. You need to go with the the same feel as you get with uh, the chalk paint or something that you use the brush strokes and it uh, when it dries it looks like some uh, concrete texture or something that yeah. it actually looks intended because you will see the brush strokes. But uh, well, well, it's it's too much work for what you will get out of it. At, <clears throat> get out of it, I think. But uh, why don't you just redo the bathroom, Havard? Yeah, um, I need to do the the hallway first, and then we need <laughs> to fill in some holes and paint the entire like concrete walls in the basement. And yeah, there is a there is a you, list, ever growing list of things to do. Do you have a second bathroom? Yeah, uh, we actually got that a couple of years ago, and. It was during the pandemic, and we got a recommendation from a friend of ours, uh, which works for um, the architecture firm, and they had a company that do like smaller jobs uh, for clients and so on. And they had like uh, three weeks spare before the holiday, so they also had like an incentive to be done, and they had a slot. And yep, we can do your bathroom. So they just knocked it out in three weeks uh, at a decent uh, friendly price so we were really happy so so we have a brand new bathroom that we nice. can use but it's weird it's it's the newest and the finest but it is downstairs so of course the upstairs is closer to our bedroom so that's the one we use every day uh, but the one downstairs the kids don't use so that's the where you go to have five minutes to yourself and have a proper shower without someone screaming at the door and banging and what are you doing in there and just uh, seeing fingers under the door like uh, zombies trying to crawl in. <laughs> yeah that sounds relatable yeah well that's my wife basically uh who suffers that i, I usually get to be alone in the bathroom for some reason there there's something about mommy mm. she can't uh, if she leaves out of eyesight is like mommy 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 <laughs> there's some benefits to being the dad isn't there <laughs> yeah there's a lot of benefits <laughs> yeah. uh, being the dad um, and of course I, I i really appreciate it and i have now been alone with the kids since wednesday through sunday so it's uh 
I had some ideas that, all right, I'll, I'll put them to sleep and then I'll have a cup of tea and I'll go down to the workshop and do something, but nope. <laughs> they know that they're home alone with dad. So of course, bedtime is then moved uh, a bit. <laughs> and then once you got both of them in bed, you are so tired. And of course you had a full day of work. So I just ended up collapsing on the couch then waking up way past midnight and <laughs> just uh, wake enough to go and brush my teeth and go to bed. So I haven't <laughs> gotten around to do anything. So I'm thinking if I've, if I've been a lone parent permanently, then I would get nothing done. Yeah. It's really, I'm impressed with single parents uh, who, who actually managed to do anything else than keeping the kids alive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 days when me and my wife we we can just our eyes just meet and it's like never leave me, and then we just carry on, and then <laughs> we are we are two <laughs> with two kids, uh, and it's a handful, and I can't really imagine uh, how it would be if you end up having both kids alone for a extended period of time. Yeah. <laughs> So I painted the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so after you painted the toilet, or is that, or did you just rephrase, or so? Okay, you painted the toilet, painted and then the you to- painted. I just he, yeah. <laughs> he painted the toilet, then he flushed, and then he painted the bathroom. <laughs> go on, go on. We're listening. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, I said we'd get a coat of paint on the bathroom and we did last Friday. Well, the wife painted the bathroom on Friday. And then I thought, oh shit, I've got to make that bench for the wedding, which is actually this Saturday. So a couple of days to go. And um, so I thought I'd better crack on with that. So uh, I've been in the workshop most of the weekend filming with the new camera. Yeah. And how's Ooh. that been going? Oh, <laughs> this is what I've been trying to get onto. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> and you're just going to have to watch the video to see how it turns out. <laughs> oh, I will. I'm really yeah. impressed. I, I thought I was lousy at deadlines. And when you just sprung what you're going to do before <laughs> Saturday, and you were also planning going on a convention or something on Friday. So, Oh, yeah, that as well. Oh, man, he's going to build a bench for a wedding and <laughs> I got a peek uh, uh, you sent some pictures here and it looks really good and really sturdy so I'm thinking if the marriage will be as sturdy as the bench they are <laughs> on a good path let's hope so <laughs> <laughs> yeah that bench survived four marriages <laughs> <laughs> you just get the request can you can you plane down the surface here? <laughs> need to get rid of some names yeah it's been quite nice doing the uh, making the bench actually I've uh, tried a few things that I've not done before so I made a router sled and yeah. um, mm. you know leveled one side off so that was really fun and when you you know when you see it on the YouTube videos or wherever it always seems like it looks like it would take ages yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but I, I skimmed over that probably did it in two passes and it took about 20 minutes and that was including you know fanning around with the camera and changing angles and things as well so cool yeah, did you yeah, have yeah. any good uh, <laughs> dust extraction or what do you call it or did you have uh, wood chips all over the workshop i had the um, extractor hooked up to the router and still ended up with wood chips everywhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because my my limited experience with routers is that they spew stuff everywhere yeah, and dust extraction barely makes a dent. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I I might have had bad, uh, bad vacuums, but yeah. I think it, it. I think it limited the damage, but it was still there was still a lot of mess. Yeah. And then, of course, I did some um, template routing on the bench as well, which I didn't have the extraction hooked up for, and that made a heck of a mess. Yeah. And then I did some freehand routing on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Which added to it all, but I've just about got it all finished and finished with the mess, I think, now. So it's just a case of fixing it. 
fixing it together and a little bit of sanding and um, then it can go off to the wedding on Saturday, get graffitied all over. Nice. And um, then it'll come back here for some finishing. So I'm not... Uh, Sorry, carry on. Uh, the, the router sled, was that uh, uh, one use or did you make it to, so you could use it again? Oh, no, I can use it again. It's um, When I originally bought my van last year, my new newish van, it came with a lot of roof rack on it. A little bit too much, so I <laughs> <laughs> so I altered the roof rack, chopped a load off it. So I ended up with some big, um, big lengths of aluminium um, angle, basically L section, if you like. Yeah. So yeah, now I can reuse it. The actual sled part I've screwed together, so now I can do slabs up to about five hundred mil wide by I don't know uh, two forty long. <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah. I was actually That's looking good. into making one myself and instead of getting a thicknesser, because I also have a design for a bench that I want to do. Uh, but I now think I've tweaked the design so that I don't have to do any of that. I can just get along using the table saw. The, um, I'd, I'd recommend a, I've got a planar thickness or a combined tool. And um, I think they're fantastic, actually. I don't very often use mine, and when I do nowadays, I don't show it on camera. And which one is it? Uh, it's a charn wood. Never heard of it. <laughs> I think it's a, a bigger brand here in the in the UK, but it's um, it does a really really nice job. The only problem with that one is it gets very very hot if you ask a little bit too much of it. I've already no. fried. I've, I've fried one motor on it already. I have been looking at the uh, DeWalt one uh, that you have here in Europe, and sometimes there is a company here that have them on sale. So I I really want to get one, but I'm not going to use it all that much. And then, of course, I would like to get the helical blade, and that costs just as much as the router, so that yeah. it starts to become an investment. <laughs> um, but yeah, that would be really nice. Uh, that's... I think that's the two tools within woodworking that I really would want to. It's uh, the larger bandsaw, which we already discussed in detail, yeah. and uh, a thickness or planer, because then I can actually get some rough but not as pricey materials and then cut them to size myself. Yeah, yeah. definitely so, a ni- nice to have, but I don't really have a, a use for it at the moment. I'm not disputing that the helical blade is a is a better thing than just the the two straight blades that's on mine. But when when I get a piece of timber off out of that machine, it barely needs any sanding. The finish is pretty good already. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> so I don't think it's a, I don't think it's essential. No, me neither. And it's the, it's the feature creep uh, <laughs> like inclination that I got that. Uh, I see it and yeah, oh, that looks good. And of course, uh, it's a pain in the ass when you get a chip in the blade and then the thought of just changing out one of the teeth and rotating them. But then again, the blades are cheap and removing a blade uh, versus just re- like revolving one of the teeth. I mean, <laughs> it's not yeah. a big job in comparison. So, I mean, that argument is kind of rendered mute, but uh, then again, I'm a sucker for advertisement. And then you have all the <laughs> YouTubers having them. So, yeah, I mean, if he has it, it will probably be something to it. And then, of course, he has probably thought the same thing after watching somebody <laughs> else got it. So, I, I kind of think all the YouTubers that have got them, we've got them through sponsorship, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Just to get to that level that people send you shit for free. It would be lovely. It would be really nice. I wouldn't mind it. Wouldn't it be interesting to see um, what what would have happened if they'd, what tools they'd be using if they'd not been sponsored? (laughs) Yeah. And then there's, uh, I hate when people do, I mean, some of, some people are clever about it where it actually feels natural to talk about something. And of course I understand that they need to do it when you have sponsorship. So and it's actually what you do for a living, but in some cases it's so blatantly, it's not even 
woven into or it might not even be related to what you're actually making a video about so it's just like advertisement on on the tv it's just a blatantly cut off and then something random and then then of course i just skip it and then i just get irritated because of course as a viewer i don't like ads that's why i paid for youtube in the first place way before i started making videos my own it's just you don't have to go through the hassle of the ads everywhere yeah so it's a it's a catch-22 but well, i do like free tools yeah yeah i, I would definitely not mind uh, getting free stuff i love free stuff but i have no desire whatsoever to make commercials for for shit especially shit i don't need or want or like those um uh, green stuff uh, healthy drink that some people are <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. doing and raid shadow legends and squarespace and whatever it is i mean the stuff i don't yeah I... yeah that's not that's not why i do this <laughs> I, I do not want to go into doing pr for someone something else i think if anybody's out there wants to sponsor me and have hardware probably up for it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm <laughs> I'm not even selling to the highest bidder. I'm I'm, sp- I'm spreading thin. I'll yeah. I'll sell everywhere. I'm a slut. That's right. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for a free pair of indestructible shoes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could even make a list. Just, here, pick one. <laughs> but that being said, I, I remember in the early '90s, um, unless you had cable, you had one channel which was state television and then there's another company established themselves so then all right that's the alarm it's telling me you have to wake up (laughs) i thought you i thought you you set an alarm on principle and time to wrap (laughs) up boys (laughs) yeah no i actually put uh, i have to do that when i put the kids to sleep i put on an alarm Ah. and then (laughs) My youngest one also demands that she also put on an alarm, so she just get to randomly pick a number, and I forgot to just clear it out afterwards. So that's the <laughs> the time she set the alarm for. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. Uh, but back to topic. Yeah, uh, we uh, in the early '90s we got a second television channel, and then that was a commercial channel. So then we got our first taste of ads and at that point there there wasn't too many of them and they were kind of clever and funny so we also for a few years we had like uh every year you had like a, a nomination and uh, like a show deciding what's the best advert this year so a lot of the advertisement companies actually competed on having the funniest, most clever commercials. But of course, at that time, and then of course, internet came and everything and streamlined and now everything looks the same because every, everybody's churning it through the search engine optimization and algorithms and everything. So there's rarely any clever adverts. Yeah, I mean, when I, I was a kid... It was fun to go to the movies because then you got to see commercials. Because that was the <laughs> only place you got them yeah. when I was I was wow. young. So that that was exciting. But then, as Howard said, when you got commercial TV as well, sometimes early nineties, I think we got it in in Sweden. Um, then it was kind of fun to see it on the TV as well. But then it it dulled out. Why was that? But I also realized something that has changed rather recently. And that is, I went to the movies uh, with my daughter to see the Paw Patrol movie. And surprisingly, at least what I remember from it, uh, me and my mom, uh, who attended, we both fell asleep. So uh, (laughs) we kind of missed half the movie. But uh, yeah, the youngest was ecstatic. But... uh, Previously, uh, the cinemas didn't show adverts uh, before kids' movies. No. So, of course, you, 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 
you meet up uh, on time and they just cue the movie and that's it. But now it was a 20 minute commercial slot before the movie started. But then also they showed a, a Disney short movie before the movie. And it was long enough that both me and my mom were just looking at each other and did we go into the wrong <laughs> cinema or what is this? So yeah. in total, this was closing to half an hour before the movie even started. And I mean, this is a kid's movie and the adverts was for anything but kid movies as well. So trying to keep the attention of a small toddler for half an hour before the movie actually starts, that's a challenge in itself. Yeah. We've always had adverts here. I mean, as early as I can remember, we had three channels. So we had BBC One, BBC Two, and ITV, which has always had um, adverts on it. And the cinema's always done adverts. And it's always been about 20 minutes long through kids' mm. films and grown up films. Yeah, I remember so it's just that completely the, normal. The adverts uh, in the movies uh, when I was a kid uh, and younger uh, uh, was that. The movie started on time and the commercials were played before that. But now they start the commercials at the time when the movie is supposed to start. Yeah. And then, as you said, <laughs> it's like 20 minutes after. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, because I remember, and this was before any digital TV, um, I was thinking about making a device because there is always a noticeable disruption in the audio feed uh, of a program when the advert comes on. So I thought they should be able to, of course, detect in the audio stream, okay, this is an advert, and then it just changes the channel for something else. But then, of course, it, there's always a chance that you switch into another advert and then, of course, the the program at that time would have been so simple that it wouldn't realize that it was now in an advert and not in a TV show. And then it would be rather difficult for to get it to jump back again. Um, so that never happened. But um, now I realize that also on all the radio channels in Norway, the the commercial ones, they actually have the same time slot for adverts. So, of course... I borrowed my wife's car here this afternoon and she got a radio in it. And when the ads came on, I just raged, rage changed to another channel. But no, nope, ads, change ads, change ads. So they have like every 10 minutes, it's a section of ads and they're all doing it. So it doesn't matter. At that point, you, you can't find a radio channel not spewing out ads, which is really annoying. I think we had two different companies uh, owning all the commercial radio and they had their two different slots so all the stations yeah. owned for one company had the same slots and but now I, I think it might be that one of them bought the other because it feels like all the older uh, all the slots are in the same <laughs> in the same time but that might be the same in norway and i have really strong feelings about radio i like radio but a few years ago, someone convinced the government that uh, DAB radio is the way to go. Uh. <laughs> and I have some issues with that because that's a dying format even before it was launched. But because with uh, satellite radio and now internet, you get so much uh, radio options uh, online. Uh, of course, the movement of podcasts and so on. So, But someone in the, some lobby organization uh, managed to convince the Norwegian government that the old FM radio uh, should be phased out. A lot of other countries run these in parallel, but what the Norwegian government is, they just, all right, we are now going for DAB radio. So they shut down all the FM transmitters, sold the equipment, I think, to some countries in Africa, and then we don't have FM radio and we only have DAB radio and the coverage of that and the oh, way sorry. that those signals work, they don't carry as well. So you need wow. more senders and so on. And of course, now you don't get the signals in tunnels and so on because they haven't fixed that yet. But you had that on all the FM bands and so on. 
And that means that we had 5 million radios in this country who was just useless overnight. Um, and now we are listening to DAB radio and their main selling point was, well, uh, since it's digital radio, we now can have more channels. But we don't have more people making radio. So it's just, uh, you have Norwegian uh, Broadcasting Channel 1, NRK 1, and then two, three, four, five. And of course, it's rerun uh, after rerun, and then it's a channel doing reruns of the rerun channel and so on. So uh, then you have some commercial channels, but I suspect, as you say, it's, it's the same company owning them. So it's the same music, it's the same adverts. And of course, the there are not enough interesting radio people to go around to actually make interesting radio programs. So it's it just feels that, of course, you have now instead of 10 channels, okay, you might have 50, but it's the same rubbish. So I was one of the things I have on my list I would like to do. I think every workshop should have a workshop radio. And I would like to build my own workshop radio, but I feel so divided because I really hate the fact that if I'm going to have a workshop radio, I need to have one playing dab. And I, I really hate the decision they made. So it's like, <laughs> mm, should I make just a, a internet radio and then uh, like uh, DIY perks or something? But uh, yeah, make I your own to... FM transmitter instead and start your own. Yeah, I <laughs> probably have one lying around already. Man, uh... Radio Hovar. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh just I, uh, run the podcast and some uh, <laughs> some of your talk your build videos. You can that's spend the whole uh, time yeah. ranting about DAB radio hit radio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh that would be oh that's a nice niche. <laughs> I uh, I have a lot of the equipment I need actually stacked away somewhere. My dad was a radio engineer and he and a friend way back uh, in high school they actually did uh, pirate radio which is uh, I guess, as a lot of places, is illegal. But even the police were listening in because there wasn't too much radio at that time. And they chose a band so they didn't interfere with anything else. And they, they kept it PG-13. So they were just playing Beatles at the time. And so people were just letting them doing their thing. So they actually had a radio channel going for a couple of years. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like in the afternoons. And I think some of that equipment is stashed away here somewhere. But I think... Starting a radio channel in parallel to doing YouTube and then having two kids and doing a podcast. I mean, I, I, I need to, <laughs> I need to yeah. put a lid at it somewhere. <laughs> Should What's we wrap up? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I've been twitching for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, I felt it. I felt. I mean, it all you, the way. you couldn't help yourself because you basically popped the bubble when my alarm went off. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for listening to Glenn, KJ, and Avard, collectively known as Number One Crude Mistakes. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.